you guys probably know I don't I I stay away from carbs uh, probably last month I don't eat them but now you see here I have beans and rice and why because <laughs> probably spent 20 bucks so that's 3.6 kilos of beans because the previous video I watched said that you have to use um, sandbags when you're sighting your shotgun with a laser and so I got these and I thought okay I wasn't sure how much I need and first of all this is pretty narrow right how do you put it how do you put it in there Yeah, I, now I need my overpriced my whisking glass. No, I probably can use can probably use this. Let's see how well it works. Yeah, this is very narrow and this bag <laughs> so I want to put the uh, beans on the bottom because I think they're stronger they're stronger than rice These are nice, very solid material. And what I was doing in the morning, one of my YouTube fans sent me a link for an online forum for hunters in uh, Alberta. And over there I went to that forum They had the link to all most uh, gun ranges, ranges. And the nearest one for a shotgun, because they all specialize, right? The nearest one is 50 kilometers away, 30 miles. So I cannot go there till spring oh, it's almost full and just one more but and then a bunch of others they were offering also like I was checking you know available ranges and it's not that easy you know like if it says gun range it doesn't mean that you can shoot everything I found quite a few are only designed for uh, pistols even though now they're prohibited but I guess if you have one right it's it's legal but you cannot sell it and you cannot buy it but as long as you already have it but again a lot of a lot of ranges are like that so I don't understand why not focus at something that's you know people can buy like a shotgun or rifle 
And so shotguns found one club and it says minimum barrel length 26 inches. <laughs> and mine is 18.5. Yeah. So I cannot go there. Then found another club. They said cannot use buckshot must use only bird shot in like those very small pellets and um, and but to my surprise uh, quite a few of these ranges that were listed on that forum were kind of like rifle friendly I found a couple that had ranges up to 300 meters and then I found another one for 600 meters and of course they're pretty far it's like hour two hours drive for me but you know if I had a rifle I could probably go there like once a month you know and I found one probably the best one for a rifle actually I thought it would be impossible to find something like that but we have a, a range here two hours away and it's uh as capacity you can go there up with a rifle that can shoot uh, up to 1600 yards no 1400 sorry 1400 can you believe this so I'm definitely buying a, a rifle in the spring and I see so that's my bean bag so pretty nice Oh, this it has this side is for the gun. Yeah, it's same as sand. Except now I'm not sure I need it, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll I will use it. Okay, now let's fill out the small one over here. It's the same deal. It has this little neck in here or like a sprout so now I have no choice but I have to use I have to use the rice the good news is that this one has a zipper wow So how are we gonna pour this in here? Oh, so that's where your your stock your stock goes in here. It took time to get uh, rice in these parts because there's only like this much of a hole in there inside so you had to put your finger in there and uh, and uh, push it in so anyway so now I have to remember that this one has rice this one has beans in case I get hungry at the range you know if I bring these with me I'll have some uh, I'll have some food now. Oh, I got a new lock from Amazon today. So now everything is locked. Well, 
looking good. All right, let me show you guys the, the site. So first I unpacked this laser thing. It's made by uh, Fiaci, 12 gauge bore site. And they make different options for or different calibers, right? So this one's specifically designed for, for um, it looks like a cartridge, right? So this designed for 12 gauge shotgun. And I tried it, it works, except it was a bit tricky to install these. They have to be like this. And then when you drop them in, they, they tend to flip over. But once they're in, there's no switch. It's a red dot, just comes out of there. And they also make this with a green dot. But I don't know, I chose the red dot because I thought it made more sense. And then I opened this. So inside was this beautiful hollow soon. Uh, side and it comes with these uh, covers for the lens you know goes like this over and so this is your battery compartment and at first it was very tight so I want to get my screwdriver and then I discovered this little tool over here so it comes with the tool and then it comes with this to tighten the um, the, the base and then I had this at first I had no idea what this is and then I watched the video where the guy says basically you can unscrew those four bolts if this is if this sits too tall you know let's say for uh, for um, this is fine I'm thinking for uh, shotgun it's fine but the guy had a, like a actual like a machine machine gun and he already had a rail and his rail was sitting like this over the gun so this was too tall for him so he unscrewed this and then he installed this and so of course this makes it so much lower so I'm gonna check but I think I should be okay with this because mine is just a shotgun and then you also guess you, you also get this cleaning cloth and I read the manual so this is your windage adjustment this is your elevation and the funny part is that in the instructions they say and I quote the built-in screwdriver tool on the protective cap can be used for zeroing adjustments. See label inside cap. And so they're talking about these caps, right? So these caps, they cover the actual adjustment um, thing that rotates. Okay, now look in here. Basically it says counterclockwise counter up and right. So if you want to lower the sight, you have to do clockwise. And if you go, want to go left, you do clockwise. So the way I remember it, so clockwise is down and left. Or counterclockwise is up and right. But the thing is, I'm looking here. I was expecting to see some kind of a screwdriver. I cannot find anything. So I had to watch a video again. And the guy says, you use this. <laughs> you guys see this? So this thing that uh, like a little peak over there and so you just put it like this till it, it fits into that slot and that's what they call a built-in screwdriver you know and there's no instructions anywhere here it's it, no nowhere it says it's a built-in like sh you know shows you exactly what how to use it so instructions are very brief like actually the guy in the video he was I, I made sure that I was I was watching a video about this specific model you see Holosun HS403R2 and I paid $251.99 Canadian plus tax and um, and the guy the guy's manual was different the guy had almost like a book you know and here they say um, this battery lasts uh, the oh and how do you turn it on and off again there's no switch so I read the manual turns out when it's a this is brightness so when your brightness is at zero it's off and then you just turn it to I found that there was one two they say is for night vision but when I tried to point it at the wall there was nothing unless I went to I think six or seven and that's what they say 6 to 12 is um, 
is uh, for daylight. I think it has a bit of a smear over there, but I don't know. How did they say to clean this thing? I think they said no alcohol. Um, the optical system, this device is a precision instrument. And let me phrase that. It's a precision instrument. You see what it says on the top? Made in China. So this device is a precision instrument that deserves reasonably cautious care. The following tips are provided to ensure long-lasting use. The optical system includes the objective lens and ocular lens, which are multi-coated optical glass. When cleaning the lenses, blow away any dust on surface, wet the lens with lens cleaner or clean water, wipe fingerprints and oil stains with lens tissue, uh, no special maintenance is needed. Avoid touching the glass. No organic solvents such as alcohol, acetone should be used. Do not try to dismantle the device as the internal parts are specially cleaned and sealed with anti fog treatment. Any such attempt basically to disassemble will void the warranty. All right, so they say do not use um, dry cloth, but you can just even use like water. But, yeah, because I see there's a, I think I touched it by mistake with my finger. But what I can do is, I have something better. I have these lens wipes. And these are made by Zeiss. So if they're safe for a camera, I'm pretty sure they should be safe for, for $250 red dot. Yeah, I got a bunch of these when I was getting ready to go to Costa Rica because they said you cannot bring, you know, spray uh, cleaner on the airplane, right? And then another thing, which was not at first, you know, evident, and it's not exactly stupid, but which way do you point this thing? You know, like there's no arrows. It doesn't say front or rear. And I looked at a bunch of pictures. I looked at the manual, doesn't say, but it would make sense since this is the uh, wind adjustment and this is the elevation adjustment. So we should be facing this way, right? So this is how it goes, but like it's weird that they don't give you any indications. I would say front or F or R, you know, so that people, stupid people like me knew the way it, it goes in. But, okay, let's put it in. So it's all loose in here, right? So this should be, and this, the manual says, this thing is designed for, you know, let me quote, the included mount is designed for use with a 1913 Picatinny rail only. So I have no idea. So this is my first time, my first shotgun, my first, my first my first sight it clearly goes somewhere somewhere like this
except it doesn't want to go. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. I put it in wrong. Basically, this thing fell off. And when I put it back on, put it with the wrong side in. Okay, I think I got it. Ah, that's this thing. It doesn't want to slide. So which one is this? Seven. Yeah, position seven. And actually, yeah, I do see that, you know, guys, I am left, uh, what do you call it? Left eye dominant. Because if I put my I put my shoulder, I mean shoulder, <laughs> I put my chin on the stock. But I don't know, maybe I also need a lower base. If I close the left eye, I cannot see anything. I have to go like this. If I close the right eye, I see it in the center. Huh. Yeah, so to see it with the right eye, I have to be like this. So my 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 chin is not on the on the gun, but with a but with the left, with the left, I can see it in the center. I tried a couple of different different positions. I tried moving it this way, like I saw a guy once did in a movie, in a video I watched before, like he had this somewhere here. And it was worse than where it was before. So now I actually moved it forward. Like my position one was somewhere here, then position two I tried was closer to me. And I find that the best way for me uh, especially since I'm, uh, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna be using my left eye. Is this position? <laughs> so, is it cool or what? Man, you don't often see a shotgun with a with a red dot. And check this out. Look how balanced this shotgun is. Well, almost. But now it's the 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 uh, chamber is open so if this thing is over here it would be better but i think it's once you attach the magazine it should be right in the center of uh, of, of uh, mass probably for this i really love this little toy you know so oh i see and it fits perfectly on the i'm probably going to put it like this fits inside with the red dot 
Okay, so now let's try to use this crazy thing over here. But yeah, it's not this way. I don't know, it's not working for me using the right eye. You know, I tried, it's too tall. But left eye, because I go like this, right? So the left eye is higher because I'm right-handed and I'm tilting the head down. So my left eye is higher than if I try to do it with the right eye. And right eye, I find that I cannot touch the stock in order to see the, the red dot. So, which is weird, but I think this way it's great. Okay, so now let's just install these and hopefully they will pop up properly. Okay, ah, that's how you do it. And you see, as soon as you put two, you see that? You don't even need to close the lid. It's pretty bright. So now the plan is to go onto that dot. But it actually does help, you know, having those. Um, but look how thing, how bright this thing is. And so they say it lasts 40 minutes. All right, so let's try this. So. It's all empty, no magazine. Everything is empty over there. The shotgun the, is unloaded and safe to handle. And so now, I'm gonna be putting this Do I have to lock it? I don't know. Okay, so now it's locked. Look at this. So that's my barrel. Right? So if I point this at that thing... <laughs> nowhere near. You know, they say they they did this for uh, 25 yards. Like if if I point the green dot from the laser on the on that uh, ink spot I did on the paper, the red the red dot is about three inches to the top and half an inch to the right. Okay, and so now we remember, what was it they said? So, counterclockwise is uh, up, right? So, clockwise is down. Actually, I think it's counterclockwise is down. Come on. I think we're good. So now the dot is pretty much right on the money. So where is the green dot is on the spot. I, I <coughs> sorry about that. So now I have to go just a little bit, just a little bit to the right. And what's funny is like it's real nice, uh, you know, it was not that expensive, but real easy because of course you cannot see the red dot, right? But I can see it clear as day. And so, especially on the white paper. Come on, 
Just a little bit more. I'm turning clockwise. Now the two dots are almost the same now. a little bit. <laughs> Sorry guys, but it's this thing is real finicky. <sighs> Jesus. Okay, I'm not gonna touch it again. So it's pretty much now, the red dot is spot on where the green dot is. So now all we have to do is just cover these uh, adjustments. Let me just double check again. Yeah, the red dot is right there. Just a little bit to the left. Okay, maybe I'll move it a bit. To the right, like the, the height is perfect. Just a little bit to one side. All right. Now it's perfect. Of course, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna shoot further away, right? But, uh, at least now, you know, because before the difference was like this, you guys would not believe this. Okay, so now we're turning it to the zero, zero. And we open this. Oh, and actually one thing I was looking online, you know, how do you, do you keep it open, the chamber or closed? And everybody on the internet said, it's best to keep it, keep it, Closed. Actually, wait a second. Yeah, I see this. It only goes one way. Okay, where's my tool? Just want to make sure it's tight enough. Okay, super tight. And then the good news, so okay, so red dot is installed, it's calibrated more or less, but yeah, before, I wanted to show you guys, so this laser was here, right, and the red dot was here, can you believe this? So which means that if I was shooting, if I was aiming my red dot here, the bullets would go, or the pellets would go here, you know, so and even at this distance, I measure this is about 30 feet, which is still pretty good, you know, to uh, to sight your your you know shotgun before you go to a range, right? And I started talking about, but this is such a cool <laughs> cool toy, you know, it's really useful. Highly recommended, guys. So I got it on Amazon. So again, it was called the uh, Feiyachi and like i said they have different brands i mean different models and they give you three sets of batteries okay so the gun is hidden everything is cool and now the latest news so remember i said i started uh, 
researching these gun clubs, right? Because nobody's answering my, my ad. You know, I posted an ad online saying that I'm looking for somebody with a large piece of property close to Calgary, where I need about 20 by 20 feet by 100 feet, uh, preferably with a, with something at the end, like a, you know, like a heel to stop bullets, but nobody, nobody replied. And so I started looking at these uh, gun clubs, right? Because, you know, what's the point of having a gun if you cannot shoot anywhere? And so all those, like I said, some were requiring 26 inches and, and longer barrels. Some were only allowing uh, bird shot, which I'm not interested in. Uh, quite a few were uh, designed for rifles only. But that was a good find because even though it's like 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers, but, you know, come spring or, or summer, if I can get a nice, I don't know, Bergera, Ruga American, you know, maybe Savage, something like that with a nice scope. I can go and try shooting maybe, I don't know, start with like 100 meters, 200 meters, 500 meters, you know. It would be fun. But I think with a shotgun it's more fun because you can uh, shoot, if I can find some private property somewhere, I can shoot at stuff like, you know, pumpkins and watermelons. Of course, you cannot do this at a shooting range. But... I couldn't find anything for my shotgun among those gun clubs, so I went on Google and I just Googled and searched for a gun club near me. And guess what? I found one. It's underground, totally safe, and the only problem is it's 25 feet only. And so, I, and so it's for pistols, rifles, shotguns. So I called them, I said, do you guys allow buckshot, double odd buckshot? The guy says, no problem. Said, so, okay, question number two. Do you allow shotguns with 18.5 inch barrel? The guy says, no problem. <laughs> I look up the information. The annual membership is quite expensive. It's like 600 bucks Canadian if you want to be there every day. But if you want to go on weekends, it's 400 Canadian. But it's right here. It's like... 10 minute drive, uh, well, maybe like 15, 20 minutes drive from my house, from my apartment, you know, um, and, and, oh, and the best thing is that the guy says, uh, the policy, they have like a promotion. If you bought a non-restricted firearm, like a shotgun or rifle, within the past 30 days, you are eligible for one hour free time at the range with no membership and I called them I said uh, so if I show you a receipt will you allow me to shoot for one hour for free the guy says yes and I said when is the best time when you don't have uh, when you don't have crowds over there he says well we open at nine so if you come close right after that they usually not that many people but he says at the end of the day uh, maybe busy so basically they don't have that many lanes so you may need to stand there and wait till the lane is clear right so probably you might you you may need to wait for like an hour right and so I call my friend I was very excited so I, f I printed out my receipt because I bought the gun online right everything was by email and I I cannot find the I think there was some kind of a bill of lading or something in the case but i cannot find that one so i printed out a receipt like my order everything is legit i have my pal my possession and acquisition license gonna bring it with me tomorrow i got my driver's license might even bring my passport i don't know just in case you know so that they don't send me back home and um i called my friend i said hey uh, i found a, a range you know 20 kilometers away so tomorrow I'm very excited. I'm just going to grab an Uber or taxi. And my friend says, hold on. <laughs> he says, did you know that Uber does not allow firearms of any kind to be transported in its cars? I said, are you, are you kidding, right? So I go on Google and I search firearm policy Uber. And it turns out he's right. And I said, man, you just like, you know, raining on people's parades, you know. So I was so excited. And of course, I don't have a car. And 20 kilometers is a bit long to hike, right? And so I went on Priceline, 
So, okay. I'll rent the car. Give me the cheapest car possible, but it, it should have a trunk. I don't care how big the trunk is, it, as long as it has some kind of a trunk so I can lock the firearm as per Canadian regulations. Must be locked in the trunk. And they say 25 bucks a day. And I said, okay, I'm going to rent it from today till tomorrow and then return, I think, Monday, 9 o'clock. Today's Friday, right? So I'm going to Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And uh, so now at 5 o'clock, I have to be at the car rental. Now it's what, quarter to 4. I still have time. Maybe I'll do some practice runs on my accordion. Then probably 4.30, I'll call for Uber. Go get my car, bring it here. And then in the morning, I'm going to... Uh, Get some, get my ammo, probably charge the magazines, I don't know. But yeah, I appreciate all the comments and I realize that probably if I shoot all my ammo, you know, like 65, 70 rounds, then probably the next day I'll be walking like this, you know, because the, I never shot a shotgun in my life. I'm not kidding. Never, ever. And this is the first ever shotgun I lay my hands on. And the last time I shot something, like I mentioned before, it was 38 years ago in the Soviet army with the, with that AKM or AKS, whatever, 5.45 millimeter full auto machine gun or a rifle, as they call it here in the States. But in Russia, it's called Avtomat. Avtomat, pistolet. So Avtomat is a full automatic rifle. Pistolet is a pistol, right? But two things now that I have the car, two last things, you know, once I pick up the car, actually, I'm not going to drive right back home. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Canadian Tire. I'm pretty sure they sell this. I need to buy ear protection and I need to buy probably some clear um, lens glasses. Because I don't know, maybe, you know, I show up there and they say, no, must have eye protection. And then if I don't have it, any of my own, they'll say, okay, well, you can buy one of ours. Here's a nice couple of glasses for $600, you know. So, and I did have safety glasses. I think that's all you need, right? Like a regular safety glasses when, what I used as a trucker. But, and I had them in my truck, but now I cannot find them anywhere. I think I threw them away. And so basically that's what I need. Just the regular safety glasses with side screens and uh, some some earmuffs you know and that's it now then tomorrow i'm gonna do a video about my first experience shooting my 12 gauge two and three quarter inch buckshot double aught at the range stay tuned see you tomorrow